Greetings from um, Galway, Republic of Ireland. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairman, for inviting to present uh, uh, the this topic today, Noble Approaches to Surgical Education and Training. Uh, the, sh the gears are slightly shifted now uh, from the main clinical theme to uh, surgical education and training. Um, so in the next 15 minutes, uh, I will try to uh, touch base on some of our contemporary training, some of our uh, older training system, and then what is new and novel uh, approaches um, in nowadays for the surgical education and training. Um, so this all started in 1989 when uh, Tim uh, Berner-Lee, a British um, uh, scientist, invented the um, World Wide Web um, while working at CERN the web was originally conceived and developed to meet the demands of automated information sharing between the scientists in the universities and institutes around the world. But the rest is history. And you've seen now everybody is connected to, to the, through this World Wide Web. Um, Pre-COVID, status quo, everything under one roof, single geographical location, confined by four walls, and then post-COVID, the brave new world, no walls, unlimited numbers of global local locations, multiple roofs, connectivity, cascades, everything has just exploded in, in terms of uh, the um, technological advances. Um, I'm just going to touch base on a couple of things, what is in the past, in the present and then in the future. And then we will be able to see what is uh, in our inventarium uh, for the surgical training. So the background is basically um, uh, the first residency program for surgical training was first introduced in Germany in the late 1880s and adopted in 1889 by William Halstead in the United States. Um, since then, the surgical education has evolved from a sheer volume of exposure to structured curricula at the moment due to the work time restrictions, surgical education, and it's basically discussed at an international level as this experienced surgeons fear that residents do not have sufficient exposure to the standard of procedures. And that is the concern uh, nowadays, what we have despite um, the technological advances. And that's why, um, you know, th this topic has to be discussed. Surgical education does not only require learning the technical skills, but also human factors, as well as interdisciplinary and interprofessional handling. When analyzing international surgical curricula, major differences even between the countries of uh, European Union with more or less strict curricula could be found. And uh, uh, Noor um, and uh, some of our colleagues here in Ireland uh, along with the 240 participants of UMERGE all around the world, um, did a study, um, which was a global snapshot of endourological resi resident uh, training. And the outcome was that, the, um, that there was a huge heterogeneity in the uh, quality of the urology training between the countries um, and with the continents in the um, uh, in the system within the national structure of the training. It could be assumed that such differences exist even between the hospitals and the training institutes. Um, but there is obviously no doubt uh, in times of globalization with the residents and doctors migrating and exchanging that training needs structures and standardization. There's, um, there's still a huge gap in the developing countries to catch up and able to afford latest surgical and learning technologies need to be addressed with the help of responsibility. And if you can see, in this slide that uh, there were about 240 members uh, of the UMERGE from 62 countries um, uh, who participated in that. And there was a um, you know, major difference in the standardization of the training. So resources is a major issue, although some evaluation tools are already available uh, for the training purposes, but the lack of resources of most teaching hospitals often result in not using these tools as long it is not mandatory by the governmental programs. So because of the decreased working hours, increased hospital cost and increased jurisdiction restriction, um, teaching hospitals and uh, teachers will have to change their sentiments and focus on their way of surgical education before obviously the governmental organizations take up that 
and take a lead on that, and then it becomes mandatory. The ability to offer on-demand training, integrate checklists, and provide personalized surgeon uh, specific feedback is paving the way to a new era of surgical training, machine learning, and logarithms and that improve over time as they acquire more data will continue to refine the education they provide. So you can see now uh, the newer learning tools which are now available, um, like simulation, electric, electronic learning, augmented reality, virtual reality, and telestration technology. We will touch base on uh, each of those. So going back to um, the 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 gist of the thing, the surgical training. Most countries provide a curricula for the surgical education, but uh, programs differ in the structure and times as we have pointed out to our studies, the snapshot. Um, the, For example, the United Kingdom and Republic of Ireland um, use very structured uh, educational program with repeated assessment for human factors, technical skills, and also medical knowledge using multiple choice questionnaires. The Irish and the British education programs try to evaluate surgeons for their daily tasks, grading them as professional communicator, a scholar, a collaborator, or advocate, and a manager. Often, uh, the completing these the steps that a surgeon may uh, proceed with the training program. This allows a highly uh, standardized level of surgical education throughout the country. And uh, there is a major collaboration between the training system between the British and the Irish system. In Germany, for example, the official a uh, trainer of the institute certifies that a resident has acquired the necessary knowledge and skills for required surgical procedures for the resident logbook. At the end of the residency program, a theoretical assessment is administered by the local uh, medical professional committee. So there are there is great uh, heterogeneity between the different types of uh, training system. Um, but then healthcare has really been notoriously slow to harness the huge technical advancement we have witnessed in the last 25 years. Indeed, much of the current uh, surgical practice remains unchanged in several decades. While we have attempted to make surgical procedures less traumatic uh, by using keyhole instruments and minimally invasive surgery, um, the underlying technology behind these minimally invasive procedures remain relatively rudimentary. And it has been only been recently that they have begun to utilize so-called surgical robots, which allows surgeons to perform more complicated procedures with flexibility in articulate instruments. However, with increasing collaboration between engineering, computer science, and surgery, surgeons, we uh, are able now to catch a glimpse of an exciting future, the next surgical revolution. The future surgery will evolve around the central theme of uh, advanced image guided surgery from image resolution throughout extended spectra of imaging to navigation and artificial intelligence. Uh, in, but obviously this all has to be imparted and has to be reproducible and to be trainable. What about the assessment of the operative procedures? To validate the cur uh, curricula in surgical education uh, for the reliability and efficiency assessment, Technical skills and are required, obviously. These assessment analyze the trainee's performance in the operating room. Um, the implementation of specific um, teaching strategies using a structured framework improve the feedback with the operating room. Uh, models can be found uh, with non-technical skills for surgeons, briefing, intraoperative teaching, debriefing, and five steps feedback, tool of surgery, set learning objectives, how did it go, addressing concerns, reviewing learning points, so on and so forth for the assessment of the operative uh, performance of the of, of a training. And to analyze the operative, intraoperative performance and competence for of trainees, different scores have been developed over the period of time and validated for their reliability, such as um, OPRS and O scores and Zubit scales. And they all have their uh, different um, uh, bullet points. If you can see, some of them are basically smartphone-based uh, methods. Some of them are direct face-to-face uh, um, uh, -face, uh, consultation with the residents. Um, which module to help to increase the surgical training? So to, to train, um, surgical competencies, different methods can be used, um, like the theoretical skills can be acquired using books and current research articles, increase amount of electronic learning, uh, technical skills can be acquired using surgical simulation, 
um, which we will see in a minute, perform as operations with supervised supervision in the theaters. And due to increased uh, standard of quality management, the interest and training of the human factor skill, which I feel is the one very important one, um, uh, personal and interpersonal and interprofessional has evolved in the last um, years. Perioperative feedback. Feedback has been defined more than 30 years ago, and it remains one of the most powerful teaching tools in the surgical education because if used correctly, it can provide an objective assessment of residents' uh, performance to improve technical skills. E-learning um, is obviously another very important tool to nowadays to learn theoretical and um, content-based classic uh, media, such as books and scientific papers and review on growing numbers of e-learning tools have been really evaluated in the last few years. Internet and software-based uh, um, learning platforms in the medical education have gained great popularity. The uh, widespread use of smartphones, tablets, and multimedia platform presents new ways to deliver um, evidence-based education material. These e-learning tools range from online textbooks to cognitive uh, simulators, stimulators and often involve online curricula. Because of the technical, technological improvement, a multitude of e-learning tools have evolved in the last years. One such online university um, I would recommend uh, for all of you to go is the Arcad University, where you can actually see thousands of these recorded um, procedures, which you can actually learn from them. And so intricately and precisely um, uh, put together. Um, Surgeons require to acquire motor skills and experience. Charles Mayo said that uh, experience can mean making the same mistake over and over again. And experience are not written in the books. It can only be learned. Because of the increased expectation of the society, jurisdictional regulations, mistakes are not tolerable. So novel learning tools are really necessary to create um, an experience which can be uh, reproducible. Um, Fitz and Posner described three-stage theory that is widely accepted in the literature. Um, rather than just reading through it, I would just usually give an example that the way you teach a child to eat food. So first of all, you have to um, teach them how, demonstrate to them how, how to eat the food and hold the uh, spoon in the hand and perform erratic steps, distinct steps with them and explain them. The second would be for and the deliberate practice with them with the feedback to say that you're holding the uh, fork in the wrong hand or you're holding the spoon and not right, have to hold it straight and then see them practicing in front of you. And then the third and the final stage would be the autonomous stage will be reached in which the learner knows how to execute a task and does not have to think about the procedures like us. And once we become adult, it becomes an autonomic stage. So the, the three stage theory, which is, um, which is exactly the pinpoint of uh, the training system. Surgical simulation. Um, to analyze the performance in the surgical simulation, an objective structured uh, assessment of the technical skills have been developed. It's called OSATS. And uh, the learners are assessed in a serial of standardized surgical tasks in an animate model under direct observation and uh, um, usually computer based. Uh, candidates are scored in the task specific checklist. Uh, consistent of 10 to 30 specific surgical maneuvers and a second global rating form. Um, so one such example would be uh, laser vaporization of the prostate. Uh, we have, they have developed a very nice tool. And now uh, for different procedures, uh, like a resume procedure and other prostate procedures, they have developed such uh, tools, simulation tools, which are very helpful and very close to the uh, the actual uh, surgery. Um, some of the different tools for the uh, for the spine surgery, uh, microscopic surgery, uh, and then the surgical robotics. And to train the technical skills in open surgery, as well as arthroscopic, laparoscopic procedures, different skill sets are necessary, obviously, as you know. Uh, these skills have be, to be learned at the best train of repetitively perform the same procedure because of the shortened working hours, cost intensity, and patient safety issues, trainees often cannot achieve the 
uh, required expertise when only performing these procedures in the operating room. Therefore, the simulation surgical procedures has been uh, become very important and advocated as a patient safety issue in surgical education. Although there is evidence that supervised surgery performance by residents has no negative impact on the outcome of the patient, but still um, you have to be perfect in what you're performing. Um, ARCAD, again, that academy, um, academy and uh, the university where uh, such uh, uh, systems are available to practice the surgical robots and um, to practice them. Um, novel um, surgical simulation, similar to the real clinical settings. Um, um, this allows surgeons to perform and train procedures in open surgery on synthetic models, human cadavers, or living animals in, v in the virtual reality and augmented reality. There are numerous advantages of the use of simulations. Uh, the trainee may learn surgical procedures and technical steps by step in a comforting surrounding and mistakes will not result in harm to the patient and simulation allow an accurate assessment of the surgical skills as well. Open surgical simulation um, requires high uh, fidel fidelity um, simulations, which are quite expensive, but really very close to the real time. Um, you know, um, AR opens up a whole new world uh, whereby the augmented reality where we are not limited by the naked eye. This has a potential to enhance and accelerate training of the surgeons, quite precise and uh, um, with quite a lot of accuracy. Um, virtual reality allows a real-time uh, measurement of the training performance by, for precision, accuracy, and error rates, and may be helpful tool to create uh, future curricula for the surgical education. And uh, these high fidelity um, um, virtual reality simulators enables the training of complex procedures such as colonoscopy, carotid artery stenting, rotator cuff reconstruction, and spine surgery. And uh, uh, virtual reality training under supervision with prompt instructions and feedback and the use of haptic feedback has proven to be the most effective way of training. Um, Telestream technology, again, a very interesting one where with their student is able to interact with the surgeons across the globe, learn operative skills and observe latest time procedures in the real time and actually make changes um, on, the, on the surgical procedures on the screen, whereby it can be actually um, reproducible again. The most important one is the human factor uh, in the surgical education. And the, this came from the analysis of the aviation accidents showed that uh, you know, the role of human factor was accountable for preventable critical errors. The assessment of human factors can be performed using tools such as surgical leadership inventory, which is up there. And in the surgical care, the awareness of the patient safety and errors related to the human factor increased in the last years, but, in, uh, but is still a minor uh, field of research and financial resources, especially disruption in the flow of an operation, teamwork and communication failures contribute significantly to such adverse effects. Um, and my last slide, uh, which will really conclude everything is that the surgical education is still an evolving field of research and novel method of surgical education will change current surgical curricula for future modern surgeons. However, it is necessary that surgical societies increase their commitment to provide the missing link between the research and implementation of these educational tools in structured education program in the future. Thank you very much.